Finland, Finland, Finland. The country where I want to be eating breakfast or dinner. Morning. So I just had reindeer for breakfast. No better way to start the day than having a reindeer when in Finland. All right, that will come with a side of reindeer sausage. Reindeer with Finnish eggs, you name it, it was pretty good. Would you please shut up about reindeer? Now I'm just on my way to try and explore Kuopio for the first time. I've got a couple of hours, so you may as well join me. In today's video, I eat fish cock, dine like James Bond, speak to the far left and the far right, and do some snow bombing. Well, Kuopio has a population of just over 120,000 people. It's Finland's eighth biggest city. You wouldn't know there was 120,000 people here because of the few blocks I've been walking so far. A small group of people in front of me, but other than that, the streets are empty. One person there. But then again, it's Saturday morning. Most people are resting. They have no interest in exploring their own city if they're not tourists here. It's too early. A lot of students live in this city. All the students are probably at home. Oh, it's too early. Bit of uh, modern art up there. I guess this would be the, the town square of Kuopio. The town square of course. If there was ever a brand in Finland that seems to have the monopoly on the, my stay here, it would be Sokos. I stayed in uh, two of their hotels now. Decent hotels, I might add. They seem to have the rights to shopping centers. They seem to have the rights to various saunas. Who is this Sokos? I need to Wikipedia this. I'm sure it's a big global brand with lots of shareholders, but the man or woman that originally set Sokos up certainly seems to be doing well for themselves. You didn't find anything at the hotel. Hey, how's it going? So what can you get in Quapio for an average sum of money? Well, this is the Quapio Hotel. You can see I'm in a normal size room on the fifth floor, standard. I've literally just arrived as of two minutes ago. I took my shoes off and then I thought, no, I need to show you guys standard hotel room in Quapio. Now, I'm presented by the Finnish music on the television. This is playing. Probably get a copyright claim, but it's quite nice. And downstairs in the lobby, it was all Finnish sort of tribal music. It seems in Finland, and I've experienced this everywhere I go, they love their single beds. It seems when the magic happens, they push the beds together and they get down to it. But until that moment, the beds stay apart. There is this clear division. Nothing is happening unless the beds get pushed together. But I love these little desks. Not too bad. I've got a, a view of a building site. Not too bad. Nice little snowy junctions. I will get to see some of this town tomorrow. Coat hangers, coffee machine, a kettle I mean. And then over here, the old, well actually it's not the old, it's actually rather new and then you can see how tired I look. I look super tired, I've been literally on the go for the last 20 something hours. So I'm exhausted, so I'm gonna sleep well. Nice hand soap, like that. Nice tap, and then this sort of reasonably, well that's not bad is it? glass door that really separates us. I kind of like that though. That's not bad. I like that. And some nice little soaps. There you go. That's a hotel in Quapio. Apart from this beautiful, probably 19th century building over here, the rest of the square seems very modern. Oh, and there's one old building over there, so a couple of old buildings that way, but the rest, all very new. Cranes are going up in the background. One, two, three. Three cranes in eye shots. The city is on the rise, clearly. This chap here is a brother to a sister who's on the opposite side of the square, according to the map, and he's one of the symbols of the city. He clearly likes his fish. I think I found where the crowds are. This is the market hall. I'm gonna head up into here. Check it, see if there's Good any morning. action. Morning, how are you? Fine, thanks. Is this, is this your city? Yes. Yes? 
How do you say it? How do you say the, na the name of this city? Kuopio. Kuopio. Yes. I've been saying it wrong. Thank you. I thought it was Kuopio, but it's Kuopio. Kuopio. Yes, Kuopio. Kuopio. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good day. Thank you. And you too. Have a nice day. I will. Bye. There we go. She said it right. I've been saying it wrong. Look at this symbology. Spooky bats. I've come for the sacred bat. Where is it? Siinä on niin kuin aito ruiskuori, eli se on 98 prosenttia ruista, sitten jälkeen pikkusen on vehnäjauho, että se on aivan sidossa. Eli se on se pysyy. So as I mentioned, that there's 89 percent of rice, and the rest is wheat, because it needs to be molded. So that's like that, it's dark, and then vaikka panna sen puoliksi. Sitten ne ladotaan nuo muikut sillä tavalla, että sen ruiskuoren päälle joka toinen toisin päin, ja väliin tulee lihaa, Ja taas päälle tulee lihaa. So uh, it's really important kind of how you build it. So the vents goes, first layer goes like this, this way. Mm -hmm. And then the second layer goes like this. So it, it's really like tight packet. And with... Uh, ah, and okay. So... Laitatko tänne kameralle? Ai, sielläkin on. It's like a pork pie, but with yeah. the bread, the bread exactly, surround. Exactly, yes, yes. So here's the traditional dish. I was being told last night that they eat fish cock. That's not what it is. You can see rye bread wraps around it. This is rye. And then we've got, well, we've got these ingredients that, slight hesitation because it looks so alien to me, but I'm gonna dive in anyway. I've never had this before. I think, I think what I see there is the fish scales. Let's see. It definitely smells fishy. It smells fishy to me. Yeah. Oh, it's warm. It's warm. It's got saltiness to it. Wow. It's certainly different to anything you'd really expect. Very soft, soft outer coating. It reminds me of an English pork pie. And then I suddenly thought of a pork pie. Except. You swap the pastry for a rye bread. White rye, good, yeah. And you put sort of a, a kind of very fishy innards in it. You can see the, you can see the sort of texture of the fish there. It's almost something like, I think your cat would like this, but it, it's too expensive for your cat. That's, that's a step above cat food, right? Tasty. So first they like uh, want to do it nice cover, so it's really in the hot oven, 270 Celsius degrees. Joo. Sen jälkeen otetaan uunista pois, käritään tuohon tinapaperiin, missä se on, yeah. ja laitetaan so. pellin päälle uun yö ylös hautumaan 14 tuntia. And after that it's nice, this nice brown cover, they take it away from the oven and they put this tin coverage over it and then they put it back into the oven and it will be there overnight so it will be there 14 hours wow. so it's really tender inside that Eli se on noin 16 tuntia. Approximately 16 hours. Ja kaikki on niinku käsityötä. Oh. Everything käsityötä. is made hand, it's handmade totally. And you make them here or at home? Where do you make them? Missä niinku konkreettisesti teette ne? Että, että missä konkreettisesti teillä on se paikka, missä te teette? Meillä on tuossa Inkilänmäellä. Joo, se tästä on pari kilometriä. Tää pari kilometriä vähän reilu kaksi. Approximately two kilometers, like five minutes from here. They have their property work. Yeah. Kuus, kuus. So, the fish part you understand, but the cock part is still a mystery. Mm. Right? Yes. Yes. So uh, uh, the birds they make noises. Chickens make noises and cocks make noises. Cock cockerels make cock a doo doo doo. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. So it's a uh, if you eat this plenty enough. Yeah. So after a few hours you make those kind of whistles and noises by yourselves because it makes your stomach go. So oh, I see. After so we're, a few hours we're you the, are going to whistle. We're going to be on the bus whistling. Yeah, out. yeah. All you are whistling and the smell is. Really bad. Fantastic. <laughs> so that's, that's the whole explanation. <laughs> that's something to look forward to. Holden, she said, the big bucks are in dick and fart jokes. Despite having uh, reindeer breakfast uh, just after half past nine, I 
the fish clock and it was according to the sign the world's best clock and it was very very nice and I think there's a there's a book here just in case you want to tell everyone how good the fish clock is tell the world what you had for breakfast and hope that someone somewhere cares different types of sausages salamis meats chili garlics chili garlic Nice sandwiches here, beautiful. Give you an idea on prices here. We've got 440 for this big loaf of bread, 390 for this one. Decent bread, actually 540. I mean, this is the thing. I mean, just like if you're saving for a trip to Japan. In Japan, it's expensive. I know. But this is good value. 120 for these things. You can put one of these in your pocket, have lunch for the day. A bit of meat. Over here, a lot of salamis, a bit of meat, cured meats, hams. A bit of steak. Not too bad. 79.90. So, steak in this town. Wow. They are expensive, but you can afford it. Here we have some marja. Wow. I mean, it has to be said, the food here is lovely. It honestly, is lovely. But if you're on a small budget, you are going to be in for a shock. 19 euros for these cakes. 7, 16, 17, 19. 17 for half a cake. 3 euros for this. Tiramisu. It's this is the traditional Finnish dessert. It's almost like a, it's the English equivalent to a stone, but they call it Laskia Spuluta. Two euros ninety. And of course, as we're in Finland and there's, there's so many lakes in this area, I'm sure some of this fish. This pike. The last thing anyone would want while fishing for pike is to be interrupted. Yeah, this is a pike. This is their sort of go-to fish. It's the England's biggest freshwater fish, and I think it's probably the Finns' biggest freshwater fish. Really beautiful, amazing fish. Pike isn't a name, it's a fish. What do we have here? I don't know if that's fish heads or something. The smell of the smoked fish is really, really wonderful. If you like the smell of kippers, if you like the smell of smoked salmon, this is what I'm smelling right now. Beautiful gravelax, smoked salmon. Look at those amazing, amazing salmon fillets. Really, really nice. Beautiful. Honestly, if you'd like salmon, Finland's a good place to come. But obviously, 18 euros 90 per kilogram. Gives you an idea. Did I buy smoked salmon? 97. 50. I think due to the fact that we're quite early on a Saturday morning, it's just before 10 a.m., the older population are here. This is a destination that would appeal to the older type of tourist. I think if you're a foodie and you've got deep pockets, look at this. Beautiful. One euro sixty for these. Amazing chocolates. Well, that was the Quapier market. Really, really nice markets. If you like your rye bread with the, the fish cock, that's the place to go. Amazing selection of fish. You can get your pike there. And look what we just have over here. We have the lady who is the sister to the little boy holding the fish. And she's looking a little bit angrier. She looks like she's about to beat someone. It could be wrong, it could be a bit cynical there, but she's definitely looking us intensely. This is um, what the locals call branch boy. A branch boy is a piece of modern art that has gone up over the last 10 years. Two locals here claim he's a nice piece of art. <laughs> nice little thing. I, um, the jury's out on this one. Calavasi. Calavasi, Calavasi. 
Java, Java, Sina, Pajasi. I'm not sure how that's probably supposed to be sounded, but Kalavasi is the lake that the city is next to. These two boys are singing about the Kalavasi Lake. And over here, they're probably playing the music to the Kalavasi Lake. Look at these guys. There's some proud fins. I like that. I like that picture. Underneath the big lights of the corporate brand that is Socos, we have the entrepreneurs that are just setting up their stalls here. Entrepreneurs have rocked up in their vans and they're selling baskets to baby clothes to uh, some sort of vegetable here. We've got potatoes. Potato seller. I mean, obviously, a good place to come if you're a witch. You get your broomstick. Marcus is set up here. Ah. Hello. <laughs> political party, I think, Paris. Paris, the political party. SDP. Oh, this is a bit of politics going on. I think there's elections due to happen any day now, so I think the people are campaigning. Hey, me ollaan tavattu vaalipaneelissa. Me ollaan tämä uusi tervolainen. We are neighbors, but we first met first time. Okay. Uh, Nobody recognizes me well, now. Well, you got to take the mask off, then we can see who you are. You take off the mask, reveal your identity. <laughs> Is it allowed? Take off the mask, man. It's freaking me out. Well, you're, yeah, you're going to be in power. You tell us. <laughs> No, it means we, we can see the beautiful smile. There we go. We can now yeah. see. And you're outside. Oh, that's much better. Nice to meet you. <laughs> nice to meet you too. <laughs> like a, we met through the uh, teams online. Yeah. Ah, there we go. I've already candidate? voted, so uh, she can't affect me anymore. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, yes, that's true. There will always be new elections. <laughs> for that trusting. Are you in power now or are you, are you trying to get into power? Uh, I'm uh, pretty new in this, uh, in, the, uh, in, in politics. Okay, I'm, uh, it's a dangerous game. Yeah, I, uh, yeah, I really, I, I'm a journalist and researcher. Okay. A researcher of visual culture. And uh, a few years ago, I moved. I've been living here in, in Kuopio for for a long time. Yeah. And a few years ago, I uh, moved to Tervo, which is a little little tiny community, 60 kilometers westwards from here. Yeah. And I live live in a little little village. And uh, uh, since uh, uh, look uh, changing the point of view into the society around. Yeah. I have to say that uh, my attitude changed because here in, in the city you you can always trust that everything is running on, everything is going on pretty well. There's always somebody who's taking care of the things. Yeah. But when you move into an other environment, I moved there because I wanted to live very close to the nature. Uh, things are not working there yeah, as much yeah. as you. And I uh, I've been working here in the city from there, traveling this. And now when I work at the university, I, I can do it, uh, my work, researching work uh, online. Brilliant. So, but the, the, my attitude into the society changed when I moved there. The things, things look very different from, from here, from the center, mm -hmm. than, than what it is from there. Because there are very pretty few people living around. And if, if we don't take, take care of the things happening... Yeah. Uh, nobody takes. This is true. This is yeah. true. So That's this why we have to have to take the responsibility of of everything that's happening and of each other, and uh, and that's why I'm here. There we go. <laughs> Standing on the marketplace. And this is your stand over here, setting up. Uh, this is the stand of the party. Fantastic. Yeah. Well, I wish I wish you luck in the election. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Well, where am I? I'm in the center of the universe. Well, you just rocket it into the center of the universe, pal. According to the residents of this area, and why not? And I, what I find really, really fascinating and also very quirky is the fact that we have here with the grand sort of city hall behind us, with the fish pointing towards the city hall, towards the tail end of this square, we have 
the market, and it's all represented by the fish. But as you'll notice, as we pan round, we pan round and we see the politi different political parties. People on the left, people on the right, people on the centre. We've got the, the greens, but they, they claim they're not quite as green. They're handing out tissues. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm, I'll go and have a quick hello to everyone. See who's going to win the election. I'm hoping there might be a bit of a ruckus going on here as they all have a bit of a sparring match with their views, but I could be wrong. It ain't going to get more political than this. Hello. How do you say your name? The, uh, the va and are you uh, left, right, centre? Left. Left. How far left? This left, left, left. Where is from? The communists. No, 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 no. <laughs> so, but it's not as far left as communists, but left. Socialist. Left. Excuse me. We're all socialists here. And elections tomorrow? Yes. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So who gives a crap if they're socialists? Why not? You can buy a little bit of market. Let's go and say hello to these people as well. Hi there. Speak English? A little bit. How do you say the name of your party? Kokomos. Kokomos. Oh, there's a symbol here. And who are you? You guys centre, right, left? Uh, right. Oh, right. Okay. Well, at least she's got some common sense. Is there going to be a bit of a, a ruckus between everyone? We've got the, le the lefties over here and the guys on the right over here. Uh, I think that we in Finland are closer each other than like British are. This country seems rather more civilized than one originally thought. Okay. Not far right. No, we're not far right. No, are no, you conservative no, right? No. Yeah. The conservative right. Yes. right. So yes. pro-business right. Yeah, exactly. Yes. That's, that's more my style of politics. Yeah. <laughs> are you guys in power at the moment or are you...? No, we're not in the government. What are your chances of the...? Well, this is not a national... It's local so election. It's not like a parliament election. It's so it's not about power, the national power. These are this kind of like a new, uh, new kind of... Um, how would you call it? Yeah. New kind of election. Yeah. Okay. And it's really about... Uh, uh, social and healthcare. Okay. So there's a new structure, uh, like aerial structure in Finland. So this is a totally new election. Completely new. So, so, so it's basically it's between a city and the community and the parliament. Okay. So basically it's between those two. Like if you uh, if you think about uh, the level of power. Okay. Yeah. It sounds like more bureaucracy. Yeah. Uh, well, many people say that. Yeah. But I, I don't think so. No, it's a good, so it's a good thing. Yeah, I, I, I definitely think it's a good thing. Although I would uh, do the structure a bit differently because now we have like 21 new aerial uh, kind of governments. Yeah. But we are like uh, our population is like half of a London, so that's too much. So, uh, I, and I think many people in Kokomus uh, feels the same way that we have too many of these aerial uh, governments now. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so you 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 want less? Yeah. yeah. Okay, makes sense. Yeah. More of a libertarian out. Yeah. The libertarian outlet. Yeah. Outlet. Yeah. Sure. Well, I wish you guys luck. Thanks. Thank you. Thank Thanks. you for talking. Yeah. Thank you. Have a good day. Cheers. Yeah. Bye. Oh. Hi there. I'm just looking into what you guys are up to. And which side of the parties are you at? Left, right, centre? Uh, a little bit left. Left. Okay. <laughs> so these guys are your allies. Yeah, 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 yeah. And th these guys are on the, the right. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And are yeah. you in, are you in power at the moment, or are you are you do you have power at the moment? Power. Power. Are you? Who, yeah, yeah, we are, we are in, the, in the government. Yeah. You're the government. Yeah. Ah, okay. It's your seat to lose potentially. Once you're in power, you don't want anything to change. Uh, I apologize. I'm, I'm not speaking Finnish. At the moment, you hold the power. And tomorrow, yes, tomorrow. The government, but this uh, uh, the, election this or district. Yeah. Elections. District elections. Yeah. Yes, and it's a new one election, so there is no, uh, no. <laughs> there are like no current yeah. seats to lose. Yes. Ah, oh, okay. <laughs> okay, so they, but tomorrow there will be new seats. Yes. yes. So yes. even more government. It's about keeping the powerful in power. This is the. Yes. The, we decide what uh, social and it's I heard and it's healthcare. Health, yeah, healthcare. Yes. Healthcare. And uh, 
rescue service is all. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Fantastic. Okay. Well, I. So, I, I, so like, it's like uh, moving the power from the pounds to this county council. Okay. We are, like, it will be like uh, centered to the county instead of all the pounds separately. Okay. So the, the power the power goes to more of a local level, or it goes to more. It's like uh, all the co counties will have. Um, we we'll working together instead of separately. Ah, okay. So, okay, that's a good thing. Yes, yeah, yes. that's a good thing. So it's all, uh, actually going to be less government. Oh wow. Okay, that's, that is definitely a good thing. Yes. But Tassu, I wish you luck. I'm wishing everyone luck. Thank okay, you for thank, thank you for taking the time. Bye bye. Bye bye. Hello. Hello. Hi, hi there. You're in the van. Is this you? No. Yeah. Perus. What does Perus stand for? I'm a, sorry. Sorry, I speak English. I'm English. Oh. Do you want to tell me? Are you are you left? Are you right? This is the guy you're standing for. I would say it's moderately nationalist. Okay. So you believe in the you believe in the retention of the people, the retention of the identity, the retention of culture. What do you mean by retention? The word retention. Keeping Finnish yeah. values, keeping... Yeah, something like that. I okay. Think. I'm on the same page. It's a very broad scale of people, I think. Yeah? They are a kind of movement uh, from many kinds of people, from all classes, I would I say. I reckon... I, I, sorry, it's now you. This yes, is you. Yes, that's my, me. <laughs> so because the, the mask. This mask so. It makes... It's funny. Much better. So, without. If you were in power, would you get rid of the masks? I stand here before you today with no mask. Uh, very difficult question. Mm -hmm. Mask seems to not work very well at the moment. They don't work for anybody. No. But, but it might work better than nothing at the very very moment. But uh, if you think about, are you talking about COVID? Yeah. Well, yeah, it's just, you know, yeah. the ch situation is changing all the time. Yeah. So it's hard to say what it will be like after one month, uh, one half, half year, one year or so. We got masks in the back, but they don't work. We would live in a very different situation just one year from now. Do you believe in the current measures? Do you believe in the vaccine passport? Do you believe in, do you believe in that? Um, I think must is not the right way. Yeah. The freedom of choosing, freedom of choice. In, on the individual basis, the best for the Western democracy. But uh, I recognize some of the measures are, are needed. Jeez, that's disappointing. No, no, not that. But uh, the compulsion, compulsory measures, no thanks. I'm on the same page. I think I think forced is not a good thing. Yeah. I think the uh, the Finns are going a bit crazy with the every time you go into a restaurant or a bar. Yeah, you get asked for a vaccine passport. It seems discriminatory. There used to be such thing for a short time in the in the past. Now this winter, there was a vaccine passport. Well, today, this for morning, today I got asked. Yeah, yeah. yeah, for breakfast I got asked. They are still in use. The measures are they are changing every now and then, every month. There's different measures, new measures, mm. old measures are replaced by new ones. Yeah. And no one actually knows very well what it's going to be and many people like me don't even know exactly what the measures are right now. And there is also some disagreements within the authorities, like between the government yeah. and some health authorities or something. There's disagreements. It's, it's not clear. There's no clear policy. And that's some reason, one reason I think people are bit, getting a bit rust, frustrated because no one actually knows what is the right measure. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure if, if the authorities or government is, is uh, to be honest, the right, right, thing, right thing to play. Because actually COVID is now in the face that no one in, in the world knows exactly what, what is the best measure, I think. True, true. What does is, what is the 296 mean? I see it on your mask. Is it's it? my number. What is, what is that? Vote voting number. You, you vote 296 in Northern Savo. Northern Savonia, it's my 
Ah, uh, so someone they we don't put they don't put an X. They put a they they have we to write put a, put a number. That seems a difficult thing to remember. Yes, in a ballot box, uh, in the voting place, we have a white paper with, with a round, yeah, empty round, and you you just draw the number. Wow, that's uh, we, Where are you from? London. London. Okay. Yeah, we put just an X. Just go. Okay. Yeah, the name is there, and then we look look at the list, and then we just go oh, X. Okay. And you guys, Perus. Perus is the the national the national party. Yes. Are you it's a, it's a moderately nationalist party? Some of us are overtly anti-EU. Some want to stay in the EU, but in the in the more reasonable, reasonable way, like in the Eastern Central European countries, Poland, <laughs> Estonia. And so. On. so create a block between the Eastern countries, as opposed to sort of like, what create a community of the Eastern Bloc countries? Yeah, or? I would. Uh, like if, I was, if I was in power, I would make Finland more closer politically to Poland, the Czech Republic, Hungary, Estonia, and countries like that. M makes sense. You got a lot of yeah. you got a lot of common ground. You got a lot of common history. Yeah. It does make sense. But people who want to speak very strongly with Scandinavia, maybe just also we have a lot of, lot of strong ties with Sweden. Yeah. Well, you guys seem to be the link. Sorry? Finland seems to be the link. The, yeah, the, the link Sweden between the Baltics. It can be linked for some 800 years. Yeah. It's a very strong link. Even though Estonia is lingually close. Yeah. Sweden is very close as well. Well, I wish you guys good luck. Yeah, thank and you. I, I, I genuinely mean that. Yeah, well, you're... well, there you go. That was an uh, interesting bit of political engagement at the center of the universe. I have a very brief time in this city, so I have to keep moving. But it seems like it's come to life now. Just after 10, we suddenly have life. I'm not sure if you can see that over there, minus eight degrees, but people are out and about. And to be honest, the Finnish temperatures, minus eight degrees Celsius is actually a very pleasant temperature. In this part of the world, we can get to minus 35, sometimes minus 40, sometimes, sometimes even more extreme. So right now, this is sort of good weather for people to do their political campaigning and people to meet with friends and people to take in the sights of Kuapio. I mean this city was built in the 17th century when well, it was first established but I get the impression everything you pretty much see here, apart from the odd new building, odd old building, I mean, is brand new, at least since the Second World War. The whole city is planned like a grid-like structure, almost has a US feel to it, or certainly has a, a modern feel. The fact you had the central town square, center of the universe. He told me that a true Cherokee believes that wherever he is, he is at the center of the universe. I suppose there's no little tiny streets. It doesn't have the old town feeling to it. Everything is new. Not a bad thing, of course, but, you know, trying to find that history, you may struggle. This is the local lake. It's obviously been frozen over because the temperature is so cold right now and it's frozen over probably for four and a half months of the year. The locals certainly put it to good use. You can see children, adults, or really young children and adults of all ages are here taking it in. Really, really beautiful. I need to get my skates. I mean, there are very few women in the history of this sport that skate with this kind of beauty. Can't get away from the politics, even the politics. Politicians. So by the river here, it looks really cool. There's a circuit that goes all the way around the lake. No wonder the Finns are so good at speed skating. The annual Winterfest speed skating races will begin in five minutes. Our 
to sit in it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And actually, you don't have to even you have to stay. You don't just stay inside. Yeah. You can you can concentrate your bow. Okay. You can go without. Problems. Okay. Sounds good. Okay. Have fun. Ready? Three, two, one, go! Yeah! yeah. Oh my God! <laughs> Whoa! Yeah! <laughs> well, that was fun. That was fun. It was a little bit shorter than I was expecting, but it was fun. And we're gonna get to go up on a little lift. Well, that was fun. That was nice. Small conveyor belt. Very idyllic. So, this is called snow tubing. Under the tall tower in the snow dusted forest, we have this thing called snow tubing. Kids love it. I'll be honest, it's a nice little rush. <laughs> well, I found the traditional houses of this area with the beautiful trees. But I'm not going to go into these traditional houses. I'm going to go up there. Well, here we are. We're at the Pujo Tower. And it stands 75 meters high. I guess the highest peak is 306 meters above sea level. Hopefully, it's going to offer quite a view. There's a higher platform, which we can go up to in a second. This is the warmer platform. The top one is outside. Oh, incredible, incredible view. Get to see See cross-country skiers down there, probably can't see them. All the little islands that are in the lakes. Ah, so down here is the ski jumping tower. Got a chairlift. People get to the top. Mostly cross country skiing because it's we don't have the two high mountains around here. But they do take their ski jumping very, very seriously. No, nope. uh, last uh, no Britain hasn't had a ski jumper since nineteen twenty nine. What you find about this region, I don't know if you see this, it's just hundreds if not thousands of little little islands in all of the late lands. They've all got names as well. Every island has got a name. In Finland, there's tens of thousands of little islands like this. How many islands can you see here? Tens of thousands. So three towers have stood on this site. One that was built in the 19th century, one that was eventually built and then knocked down at the beginning of the 20th century. And then this one, built and completed in 1963. The Puju Tower is found on the top of the Pujo Hill in Kuopio. Comment below if I'm saying that very, very badly. There's a viewing platform just outside. It is a little bit icy. You can't go behind the ropes here. Pujo Tower since 1963. You don't probably don't want to go behind the ropes here. This is a death trap, but maybe trying to stop the base jumpers. I can imagine a few base jumpers have gone off the top of this one. But I don't think they ever tried to market it to the billionaire spelunking base jumping crowd. But it's freezing. I'm gonna go back inside. So on the lower part of the tower, we have this 
nice fancy restaurant. Now you probably can't tell when I'm talking and distracting you, but if you notice the table, you can see it moving slightly. We've got this rotating floor here. So it's a rotating restaurant. All I asked for was a frickin' rotating chair, okay? And I've just been informed that this restaurant rotates 330 degrees in an hour, so it takes just over an hour to do 360. You kind of get the impression that it's the kind of place that George Lazenby might rock up to in the 60s. And one of my favorite Bond films on His Majesty's Secret Service. It's the kind of restaurant you would expect him to appear in. Come and sit down. I don't know. Thank you. This is rather beautiful. I really like this. I don't know if there are any Bond girls here, but there is food. Stand here for too long, deciding you're going to end up over here. <laughs> it's fantastic. We've got the Finnish music playing, obviously. The restaurant really isn't that busy. I have ordered you a steak, Piz Gloria. I hope you enjoy it. Thank you, I'm sure I will. Ah, <sighs> well say I am stuffed once again. It seems to be a theme of my trip in Finland. I'm having amazing food everywhere I go. The food here is exceptional. Now I really did enjoy dining at the rotating restaurant. By the time I had finished my three course meal I had rotated twice so I really did get to enjoy the view. I was told the restaurant is generally busier in the evenings, however it is also very busy at the weekends. I had the advantage of being there on a weekday, so really got an exceptional service. The Puju Tower wasn't the only place I ate well at in Corpio. I also dined the night before at the House of Bishop, also known as the Crystal Hall in the centre of the city. Here I got to sample an array of finished dishes, each one tantalising my taste buds. One thing is for certain, when you visit Finland, you will eat exceptionally well. They understand the art of food and most parts of Finland take the art very seriously. Go willing to try as much as possible and you won't be disappointed. Well, I have to say that was an incredibly enjoyable dinner. I'm uh, about to head off, but as everyone's left, telling me I have to leave as well, but honestly, really, really good dinner. Great Finnish hospitality, thank you. And this is going to call an end to my time. No more um, sledging down the slopes. No more staring out of the windows at the, uh, the amazing view. And the snow-kissed trees. This has been a really, really nice time in this city. A big thank you to the people of Corpio and Finland for simply engaging with me. If you like this content, be sure to check out my Finnish playlist. And do check out my other adventures in random places around this beautiful planet of ours. Keep progressing and I'll see you next time.